Hey guys, welcome back to WDYDCSP. What do you do as a central sterile processing technician? So guys, it's been a long time coming. I know I told you that I would be doing the educational part of these videos um, to basically give you free education that you can get um, that you would pay for online or take a class. Um, but let me let me state this. In doing these videos this is a tool to get you to become a certified sterile processing technician if you choose to become a certified sterile processing technician no way shape or form can you use these videos to become fully certified as a sterile processing technician there are two regulatory agencies that I'm aware of here in Jersey um, in the East Coast <clears throat> that offers certification um, full certification to technicians. Um, you have the CBSPD and you have Ishim, both of which I am certified by. Um, and I can't request and I can't um, I can't suggest one over the other. Um, I think they're one and the same. The goal is the same, patient safety, certifying technicians to become professionals and um, educating you guys and everything in sterile processing. Um, but with that being said, the application to both have requirements, guys, um, to become sterile processing technicians. So I will read off what CBSPD requires, and I'll, I'll start with them. So in order for you to become certified through CBSPD, you have to check one that applies to you. You either have to have completion of 12 months of full-time employment or equivalent part-time hours performing SPD activities, okay? You have to provide verification signed by your manager on this examination or completion of a SPD training course with a passing grade of 70% or higher, provide a copy of certification grade from your instructor or completion of six months each, this is in parentheses, of full-time employment or equivalent part-time hours and related allied health, clinical health care profession, as well as performing SPD activities um, in SPD, okay? Or completion of 12 months of health care product sales or service related to SPD professionals, all right? Now, what's the equivalent hours? I'm not sure what the equivalent hours would be. I guess it would be 12 months a full time, I guess. So whatever those equivalent hours would be. So 40 hours a week, um, yeah, and so forth. Um, for the six months or full time employment as well as performing SPD, or you can be a vendor and become certified through CBSPD. All right, that is the CBSPD's um, current application and their current requirements to take their exam. Now, I will read off what Ischium has. Now, Ischium is the other certification board, okay? Um, I'm not making this stuff up, guys. So, Ischium provides two things, okay? Um, they give you the option to have a provisionary certification or a um, full certification. So, in order to have full certification to be truly recognized by Ishim to be certified is you have to have 400 hours of hands-on experience, okay? Um, that's what, 10, 10 weeks, 40, yeah, 10 weeks of hands-on experience to be fully certified by Ishim. Um, so that has to be signed off on. There are certain tasks that you have to do um, on page three, it will check, and you can download this on ischium.com and look at that information. Um, CBSPD only lets you look at their application during the time periods in which the applications are um, available, the exams are available. Um, Ischium, you can download their certification application at any time and look at the requirements. So I do recommend that you do that, guys. Um, and it will also give you... Um, the criteria that you have to meet to become certified. So again, with Ishim, um, you have to have 400 hours of hands-on experience. So basically you have to be employed or have externship if you took a course. 
Ishim will allow you to self-study. So you can look at these videos and if I give you enough information in these videos and help you out enough, you can um, download the application, you can pay their examination fee and take their exam and have a provisionary certification. Provisionary certification is good for six months. They do offer a two month extension, I believe. Um, but after those six months, if you do not have the 400 hours of hands-on experience, you will have to take the exam all over again. So what's the advantage of self-study versus um, taking a course at either a college, online, um, through the many private sectors like myself do? Well, the one thing is that if the place of, uh, of teaching has instrumentation for hands-on experience, you get to see the, I mean, there are great books out there, don't get me wrong, and um, Isham and both CBSPD does a great job with their um, manuals. Um, Isham's is in color, uh, CBSPD is in black and white, but they give you a fair enough amount of uh, illustrations in here, but not good enough to know what the instrument looks like in real life. Um, it is very difficult to um, sometimes distinguish between a regular hemostat and a Rochester pian, um, or what a mosquito hemostat and a regular hemostat looks like, or what a cryo looks like. Um, seeing the instruments in person helps a lot. Um, you know, the Mets and Bomb scissors and the Mayo scissors. So the advantage of taking a course in a college or a private sector, um, and this is not all of them. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speak for all of them. Um, I'm gonna speak for those that I know of. Um, but if you take an exam, if you take a course with some of the private sectors and some of the colleges, they will have, or some of the, some of the good technical schools, they do have instrumentations for you guys to look at, play with, take a, I mean, have a feel for it. Um, you know, you can see in a book and it'll say a, you know, Kelly Richardson or a Richardson and then a Kelly. And you'll be like, well, it looks like the same instruments until you grab it in your hands and really look at it. So looking at this picture alone, looking at this video, you can see that little curve in there and that flat surface makes a difference in what the instrumentation is called. A lot of times they're interchanged and called the same thing, but there is a difference. We'll go into that later on, guys. So that's the advantage of taking a course. Um, the other things you guys need to look at when you take courses, um, either online or um, in person. In person is my recommendation. Online is basically you're reading a book and you're taking exams. I mean, it's it's it's, it's the valid truth, but it gives you the means to be able to take the certification. Um, you completed the course, you passed the course, you have a broad understanding um, knowledge-wise. So it does give you that uh, opportunity and they are accredited by both certification boards if they are. Um, you have to look into that because um, there are a lot of scams out there. You know, this is a world of scamming, but again, you guys can choose from there. But, um, if you take the course online, um, they will have some uh, PowerPoints. Um, some of the good uh, courses have some PowerPoints and they go through the chapters, chapter by chapter. So let me, like I said, I can't recommend one or the other. I mean, they're both the same, but chapters one through six in the Isham manual um, basically talks about the introduction um, to central sterile processing, medical terminology, anatomy, microbiology, um, regulations and standards, and then infection prevention. Okay, that's one through six in the issue manual. One through five um, of the CBSPD, one through four, correction, one through four, is the roles and responsibilities, anatomy and physiology, microbiology, infection prevention. So, um, they pretty much in their contributions and forewords as they kind of give you the um, condensed version of the history of sterile processing as Isham gets a little bit more in depth into it. Um, those six chapters are critical. 
into you understanding what are you getting into. Um, the microbiology of it and the infection prevention of it is really important, guys. Um, a lot of people want to skip into the nitty gritty and what is that we do with the decontamination and the instrumentation and sterilization and things of that nature. But there's more to it. There's the behind the scenes. The, you know, it's good to know uh, anatomy and physiology because you get to understand where the instrumentation is used at in the body and kind of get a sense of, okay, if... Let's say, for instance, um, a rectal probe, okay? The rectum is the rectal ca cavity, the colon, okay? If you think about it, you know, you're going to be deal with feces, um, bile, and things of that nature. So you have to kind of a sense of what are you cleaning, okay? As if you're using a vascular instrument, okay? Like for heart surgery, okay? You're down around the heart. The heart, you think about it. Okay, the heart pumps a lot of blood, it's a muscle, you're thinking about a bloody instrument, okay, nasal, okay, you're thinking about mucus, ear, you're thinking about wax, things of that nature. It gives you an understanding of the type of soil that you're dealing with and the condition of how the instrument is going to come back. So if you understand anatomy and physiology, you can apply it to how the instrumentation is used, okay. You may not get the broad sense of it, okay, but you'll get a general uh, sense of what is being used for um, physiology again what part of the body you know so if you're looking at a surgery and you're saying okay they're using a spine they have a spine case and the patient is in a prone or um, um, supine position okay prone is face up supine is facing down so they're working on the back of the patient in supine and prone they're working in the internal cavity so if you think about a spine case turn sideways here if the patient is prone they have to go through i'm a big guy okay they have to go through all this fat all this muscle you know muscle you know but they have to go through all that in order to get to my spine okay so you're dealing with longer instrumentation more body fluids things of that nature if the patient is in a prone position i'm face down okay there's not a lot. There's muscle back there. Okay, don't get it. Don't get it twisted, guys. There is some muscle back there under all that fat. But they have to go through less fat, less muscle to get to my spine. Okay, but now you're getting right to the bone. Okay, so you have to think of things of that nature. So those chapters are extremely important. Then you have to think about the patients that come in. Okay, not everyone's bill of health is a hundred percent, guys. Okay, you have people who have. Um, you know, all kinds of diseases, um, uh, hepatitis, HIV, um, you know, any venereal diseases. Um, you have people that are diabetic, high blood pressure, um, even though those aren't with the uh, infection zones, but you have to take that in consideration for their health. So how important is our job that we clean these instrumentations thoroughly and we sterilize them and we handle them with care so that when they get to the patient, we're preventing on our side, we're preventing any infectious diseases that those um, patients get from our end. What happens in the OR is completely different, okay? It's how they handle it afterwards. Um, we can't control that. We control our end. So the chapters on infection prevention, helps in that sense. It also helps in when we get these instrumentations back from the patient, okay? So technically, and if everything is followed by the rule, these instrumentations are handled and they're cared for properly in the OR. They're doing their point of use cleaning, which we'll go into later. These instruments come back. There's going to be some soil on it. It's not going to be squeaky clean, but it's better than just using it and just let, letting the blood dry on. Because think about it. Think about when you eat, guys, okay? If you had a hot dog, okay, and you put some ketchup and mustard on there, some relish, onions, whatever you want to do. You doctored that hot dog up and made it bang and some melted cheese on there. You put it on a plate, you throw it in the microwave or whatever you do, and, you know, you're eating over the plate some mustard splashes, some ketchup splashes, you know, some cheese melts off and gets on the plate, all right? And let's say you set that plate off to the side. You just threw it in the sink. You didn't rinse it off, just threw it in the sink. Later on, you go to clean that plate and you got some dried up mustard on there, dried up ketchup, 
some dried cheese on there, okay, and you run it under water, it's not going to rinse off really well. You got to put some elbow grease on there, sometimes a little more elbow grease than normal, okay, and it's hard to come, it's harder to come off. The same thing happens with blood and body fluids if this is not pre-treated, all right, and we'll talk better about that a little bit more, but if the OR staff is on point, they're taking off as much of the bio burden as possible. When it comes to you, it makes our job a lot simpler. So that's part of infection prevention because you don't want to build up the longer, you know, uh, uh, body fluids uh, accumulate on instrumentation, the more bacteria builds up. And we'll talk about that um, in more contents later on um, when we talk about how uh, bacteria and viruses multiply and how fast that can happen. All right, the chapters on the history of central processing gives you a sense of where we came from and where we're going. Um, important roles of how it started and how we are where we at right now, okay? Um, then we have, let's go, let's go into chapter, you know, we'll talk about medical terminology, okay? A lot of these instrumentations are named after a part of, a, of, a, of anatomy, okay? And the surgeries, um, you know, a, 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 you know, resections and otomies and ectomies and, um, you know, osteo, understanding that t medical terminology helps you understand the instrumentation as well, okay? And helps you understand the set. So you have an abdominoplasty set, okay? Or uh, 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 a, a laparoscopic set or uh, uh, la laparotomy set. Okay, those medical terminologies, okay, they may seem, sound foreign to you now, but if you understand it, you know, okay, laparotomy, otomy, okay, otomy means, okay, this, and lat means this, this set is used for this specific surgery, okay, that is the importance of knowing this, they may seem like, oh my God, these chapters, is like they're doing too much, they're asking too much, they're, they're getting in debt too much, I don't need to know all that, you know, in certain states, I can just walk in off the street and, and become certified, and, and become a technician, well, that's the problem in this field, because they don't take us seriously because of that, and it's serious, it is very serious, especially in these times of COVID and, and unknown protecting ourselves and knowing these medical terminologies and knowing uh, 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 what they mean and applying it to your job makes you the professional guys, okay? Who wants to go to a doctor that doesn't understand a disease or doesn't understand the, the terminology behind it? Oh, I can just become a doctor. I've seen the surgery done a hundred times. I can do it. Or, I, I, you know, what does it take to give somebody an aspirin? Oh, wow. You know, hey, you know what I'm saying? You have a headache, take an aspirin. Okay, no, that's not the profession. That's not why they're professionals. Okay, same thing with nurses. Okay, you may, you may look at it and be like, oh, all she does is draw blood. There's an art behind that. Or, you know, she's taking a vital. Who, who, who doesn't know how to count heartbeats? Uh, there's, there's an art to that, all right, guys? That is why we are professionals. We are not just technicians. We are professionals. And when you become certified, it raises the bar. It raises the standard. People look at you differently when you're certified in a profession. So those are um, pretty much chapters one through six in one of the books and chapters one through four in the other. Uh, again, this channel is... Uh, put together to help walk you through each chapter, walk you through the contents of what um, is, is entailed in the chapters so that you can better understand whether you're thinking about getting into the field or if you've already been into the field. I constantly, personally, I constantly read these chapters, guys, these books. And um, I can tell you each time I take away something. It's, it's I've been certified for a number of years now. Um, and every time I read these books, um, it's Ischim is in the eighth edition and CBSPD right now is in the seventh edition of their book. And I can tell you each year something's different in here. And I, I'll read I'll read these books and I understand them very, very well. Um, and I know my job very well. But I often read a chapter and I go, oh, you know something? I didn't catch that the first time. Or, you know, it'll reference to the Amy documents, which is our standards and our guidelines, 
Um, and I'll go back and I'll read that and I'll be like, hey, you know something? I, this kind of makes sense. Or I think about it at work and be like, oh, I need to apply this at work a little bit more. Um, so guys, thank you for joining me. Um, the next time that we speak, we will tackle these chapters one by one um, and kind of go into it. Um, as always, guys, stay true to yourselves. Keep it 100. Peace, guys, and see you next time on WDYD. What do you do as a central store processing technicians?